Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. Uh, you can find us online at rce-cast.com. You can find links to all the usual, Jeff's blog, my blog, our Twitter accounts, and all the usual social media things out there in the world. Uh, Jeff, once again, is here to help me out. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. It's been a little while since we've been on. We took kind of a summer hiatus, but we're back. We've got a bunch of shows lined up, and uh, let's just jump right into this first one. Okay. So our guest today is uh, Steve Tiki um, from the University of Chicago. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about Globus Online. So Steve, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so this is Steve Tiki. I'm with the uh, University of Chicago and Argonne National Laboratory. And I'm one of the leads of the Globus Project, which is really about providing software to help researchers get their research done. Okay. So um, we've actually had the Globus Toolkit on the uh, show before. Uh, we'll include links to that to kind of talk about what the Globus Toolkit software package is. So can you give us a little bit of an overview of what Globus Online is and what it aims to accomplish? Yeah, so maybe as a starting point, I can do that as a comparison even to Globus Toolkits, kits, and some of you may have familiarity with that. Um, you know, we had spent, starting in the mid-90s, uh, a lot of time building really plumbing software, Globus Toolkit, things for helping scientists move around big data, deal with their security information services, stuff like that. But we really focused at the plumbing layer and expected other groups like the high energy physicists or climatologists or other groups doing their big science to build their own custom solution over top of that underlying plumbing that we provided in the toolkit. Um, after I went off and spent a little time in industry and then came back to the university about five years ago, uh, Ian Foster and I, who's my partner in crime in all this, uh, decided that we really wanted to generalize what we were doing. So I'd take a lot of the lessons we had come out over the last decade and a half in helping scientists deal with big data, but produce tools that would be applicable to the rest of the science community, not just to the few big rarefied science communities. So that's really our focus with Globus Online is taking a software as a service approach, you know, very, you know, things like Netflix, Gmail, sort of online web-based approaches for managing your big data transfer and sharing and longer term getting into richer and richer research data management functions for the nonprofit research community. Now, can you explain that a little bit more? Because, I mean, to me, when you say web-based transfer of terabytes worth of data, to me, that's like trying to upload a, a video to YouTube and getting really annoyed because it fails halfway through. Because <laughs> yep. that's, that's, in my mind, what the typical state of you know, web-based transfer is. Clearly, you're talking about something different, though. Yeah, you know, I, I use the analogy a lot, right, that my seven-year-old son every day streams gigabytes of video to our house with Netflix, right? And why isn't it that easy for us as scientists to move our data around? You know, and if you think about some of the, the use cases, maybe that's even a place to start, right, is that, you know, as a, as a scientist, you know, I, there's data coming at us from all sorts of different directions. You know, maybe I'm using scientific instruments like next-gen sequencers or MRI machines or light sources or things like that. Or maybe I'm running simulations on an HPC cluster, so I need to, you know, I've got big output files of my simulation results, or I've got big data coming uh, that I want to do analytics on uh, from various, you know, population sources and the such. You know, that's data that I need to deal with and get to the right places, right? Whether that's to my HPC processing cluster or to my cloud running in Amazon running Hadoop jobs or, you know, to my desktop or my server sitting in my closet in my lab, right? There's all these places I need my data, right? And, you know, as I sort of that analogy with my son and Netflix, it should be that easy for me as a scientist to get that data wherever I need it to be, right? And to be able to do that by just simply sort of Point and click, you know, get to the various endpoint systems, say what I want to move from A to B. If there's failures, have that just taken care of, right? When when Netflix, you know, they've got their, their simian army that goes around killing servers and even whole data centers randomly to make sure their reliability works, you know, my son doesn't have to debug that when those things fail, right? And the same should be true for us, right? It, 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 that it should just work. We should, as the service provider, be taking care of that. 
with one big difference, of course, which is in this case, the data is sitting on your own storage systems, right? So we have to be able to orchestrate and manage these transfer and sharing activities between these existing systems, leveraging the high performance networks, all that sort of stuff, and act as an overall kind of mediator or manager of these activities so that you don't have to do that yourself. So you're using the name Globus for this, um, but like we had the Globus Toolkit on here before, which is the underlying, you could say, the heavyweight software part of this. And it, it actually does a lot of things besides just file transfer, and we're fo but we're just focusing on file transfer right now. Why did you select to go with the name Globus? Why not just like wet grid FTP or something like that? Like why? Yeah, yeah that's uh, artifacts of history, I suppose. Um, you know, we're back in... It would have been in 1995 when we first wrote the first uh, DARPA grant uh, for the software. There was, we had a previous project that I was also a lead developer on called Nexus. And it was, it was a communication library for clusters that we were starting to use in some interesting ways for more distributed environments. And so we, when we were writing that paper, I remember we put in a LaTeX macro for the name of the project and stuck in Globus as sort of the global version of Nexus and never really went back and changed it. So it kind of stuck. And then, you know, then when we started up Globus Online, it really was, you know, we had debated a lot. Do we keep the sort of Globus name at the heart of it or do we go off with some other whole new name? But I don't know, we like the name as a good generic name and, and it kind of conveys helping scientists with distributed big data stuff. So you know, that, that as much as anything is why we just kept with it and kept moving. And so we really then talk about Globus Toolkit as that plumbing layer toolkit that we and many others use. And then Globus Online as the software as a service that uses the toolkit but provides this real end-to-end -end experience for the users as software as a service. All right, now, what you outlined a couple of these already, but let's go a little deeper. You said what are some of the advantages over, say, a web-based upload, but let's go to something that's a little more robust than a web-based upload, like an, an SCP or an SFTP or you know, the other traditional file sharing things that seem to work pretty well, or, or even better, uh, you know, sneaker net. You know, if I just FedEx myself a couple of DVDs worth of, of data, what's, what's the advantage of what you're offering? Yeah, so that's good timing. So I just actually got off giving a webinar with the ESNet folks who are uh, you know, one of the national uh, high-speed research network providers for Department of Energy. And they actually had some great slides on this. I would definitely refer your, your, read, your listeners and you might, guys might even want to interview some of the ESNet folks in a future podcast. You know, they've got, they talk a lot about the networks and the high-speed networks. And they, so they had a great slide about exactly what you're asking, which is that you know we have networks now to campuses that are gigabit going to 10 gigabit, even 100 gigabit networks. And you know, 10 years ago, when we were only talking you know 10 to 50 megabit network sort of things, you know, schlepping around USB drives, shipping them FedEx was probably the fastest way. But they actually had you know showing the numbers of you know, you, it's just not the fastest way anymore. And so they went through these various tools. So, for example, SCP, right, it was not designed for high-speed, high-latency networks like you hit when you're moving a lot of data around. It's, it does well with sort of very local area environments and the, and the like. But, you know, they, they showed some experiments where, you know, on a 10-gig network, you know, they could only get about 150 megabit per second out of, out of SCP, it's just it's just not tuned for that. There's patches to SCP that allow you to do higher performance, maybe get up to the gigabit range. Uh, traditional tools like FTP, similar sort of things, we can get to the gigabit range, but they're not really tuned for lots of files and smaller files and exploiting parallel streams and all this sort of thing. So, you know, there's just this this whole set of tricks, I guess, as much as anything that we and many others in the community have developed out over the last couple of decades for how do you really move data at sustained rates of gigabits per second, even into tens of gigabits per second. And to first order Grid FTP as the underlying Globus Toolkit tool and Globus Online as a client to that, it, they, it just plays all these tricks. It knows all the games to play to tune your networks for parallelism and for buffer sizes and pipelining and all, all the things you need to do to make it work so that you really can.